Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another jewelry making video at my YouTube channel and my blog, KeepsakeCrafts.net. Today I have a memory wire bracelet for you that uses curved tubes in the design. It really lightens the look and ends it an air of elegance. So we've made a few memory wire bracelets on this channel, but today's is a little bit different because we're using these curved tubes to make the bracelet. And what these do is, first of all, they visually lighten the look because they're just they're thinner, they, they take up a lot of that space on the bracelet, but also they practically lighten the bracelet too because there's so much space that isn't packed with heavy beads. So you can do the four or five wraps that you need in a memory wire bracelet without it weighing you down. Now here I have all of my beads laid out because it does take a little bit of time, but I thought I would just go with you through the process. So the first thing I did was decide on the color scheme, and since I had these silver tubes, I decided to go with silver and red. And so I dug through my bead stash and found several different spacers, different types, and here's a few pairs of them, in an antique silver finish. And then I also found some red focal beads that I liked, as well as some red accent beads. I then put together a set of them. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna have this with these on either side, and then a red on either side, and then finishing with one of these. I needed to add in these little three millimeter beads because some of my spacers actually slipped right over my tubes. So these little three millimeters kept them from doing that. So once I had a set or a repeat, a pattern that I would repeat, I measured it and determined that it was about three inches long and so for my bracelet I would need around 11 or 12 repeats. I like to do about a 35, 36 inch memory wire bracelet. So it goes around your wrist about four or five times. Here's actually the first memory bracelet I ever made. It goes around four times and it's not going to come off easily by shaking or any activity you might do. But if you only go around two or three times, you'll find as this end loosens, you'll find that sometimes it wants to come off. So I like to do a lot of wraps. So then just to continue on explaining the design process, I had first picked out these spacers, which I really liked, but I realized I only had 10 of them, which was only good for five repeats. So then I found other spacers and I decided to only use five of these big red beads and then to also alternate those with these ones. These are kind of pretty. They're painted black beads. But to carry the theme through, I'd use the same six millimeter red ones and then these on either side. So then once you have your repeat all figured out, then you can lay them out and that's where a bead design board like this is invaluable. So you can see the pattern I have. It's the curved tube beads with a little three millimeter bead on each end. And then between each of those sets, I'm alternating with the black and red beads and the large red beads. I tend to think in very symmetrical terms, but you don't have to. You could just put whatever you want in between. And I, I've seen jewelry like that and I love the look. I just can't bring myself to do it. Now in other memory wire bracelets I've shown you, we've just finished the ends with a loop. You just take your round nose pliers, bend the end of that wire with the loop, and then your beads can't escape, and you repeat on the other end to finish your bracelet. It's a nice finish, it's secure, you can put dangles on these loops. But today, I'm using bead ends, and these are just little beads that are drilled only halfway through the bead. I don't know if I can find the hole for you. These are so tiny. But you can see that on here. The hole does not come out the other end. And what I did was use two part epoxy to glue that in. If you want to learn more about bead ends, I've done a Friday Findings video explaining all about them. So I've gone ahead and done this. I did this last night so that it would have time to sit overnight. And also, whenever I'm making a memory wire bracelet, I don't cut the coils off until 
I'm done. That way I don't waste any of my memory wire. So I'll be starting my stringing on this open end and then just pushing all the beads down to the other end. And like a slinky, <laughs> memory wire can get tangled up. I always tangled my slinkies anyways. But if you're just patient, don't pull and yank on it because like a slinky you can pull it out of shape. Just kind of carefully and patiently work it and undo it until it's all free again. And then somebody once asked me about how do you do the stringing. They wanted to see the stringing and I thought it was obvious but uh, there is no magic about it. I'm going to start down here. I decided to end and begin with these curved tubes. Put on a curved tube and one of these little three millimeter beads and then start stringing on my pattern. There is no magic trick to it. You just have to pick up each bead and slide it on. This is the time when I usually put on a podcast or a good audiobook or some music and string away. So here I've got all my beads strung on and just to let you know this took about 25 minutes to do. Now you can see even though I have about 35 inches of beads here it doesn't look like that much because these long curved tube beads really just fill out that space and give it, like I said earlier, a lightness. So then I'm going to trim my wire. Uh, you can either buy special memory wire pliers or just use a pair you don't care about. And I'm going to leave about twice the length of my bead, not very much, like an eighth of an inch or so just to let the beads have a little bit of play. And here I have some two-part epoxy that I mixed up and I'm just going to put a little on the end of my wire and then I'll put on my bead. Just use a wet wipe and clean up all the excess glue. And then you want to be sure to let it set not just for the drying time for whatever glue you use but for the full curing time before you wear the bracelet. For the links to the tools and materials we used in this project click here to go to the accompanying blog post. So here's another look at the project we made today. A slightly different take on a memory wire bracelet that maybe isn't quite so heavy and chunky looking as other ones we've done. I hope that you enjoyed this project and that you'll give different kinds of components like long curved tube beads another look. Thanks so much for watching Keepsake Crafts videos. If you like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel make sure you do for three new videos every week I upload on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and on my blog. Happy creating! Bye-bye!